Hello and welcome back to Stratford Red Devils Talk with me, your host, Agostino Zinger. Main United won 3-2 against Brighton away from home and we just about got away with it. We just about got away with it. Not a very convincing performance, pretty lucky to get the win, let alone a draw. Even if that did happen, that would have still been a lucky result. And if anything, more questions than answers regarding what we're doing for this new season and how we intend to resolve it. Um, lineup wise, I don't really have much com complaints really. Um, I think apart from Eric Bay's omission from the team, I think the lineup sort of picked itself. I would argue really firm, vermently or vermently, however that phrase, that word is, um, with anyone out there that Eric Bay is quite possibly our best centre back at the club, even with his injuries. And that's also including the likes of Harry Maguire. I honestly don't think Harry Maguire is anything is any better than a Tarkovsky at Berlin at sorry at Burnley. Is any better than a Lewis Dunk at Brighton? Um, and a few other centre backs that play outside the top ten. I don't think he's that much better than those guys. Are, uh, for for sure, he's definitely not. You know, within the price bracket of a Virgil Van Dijk, that goes without saying. But in terms of actual ability as a defender, he's no better than those guys. If anything, the best thing that he's got about him is his aerial ability. He does head the ball pretty well. He clears his line pretty well. But isn't it, as a defender, isolating him one on one is fairly easy. Turning him is fairly easy. Uh, running behind him is fairly easy. Um, and again, just in general, from one on ones, he's not really the best so if anything his heading ability sort of saves him and whatever we had and whatever notion that is that he's supposedly meant to be good at passing the ball through the back has been completely dispelled at his time at United balls that he could try to clip over the top four our strikers go out of play they hit the keeper they get cleared out by a defense it's just not a great player so apart from Eric Byers mission I think the team was fairly decent and should be enough to beat a side like Brighton but of course, as per usual with Man United of of um, of recent times within this modern era, we just don't look like we have any idea what we're doing, right? I think, apart from maybe I would say Van Gaal's time at the club, which was you know a fairly laborious, uh, plodding type of football. At least we saw what he was trying to do, right? We saw that he was obviously trying to implement a passing possession based style of football. He was obviously favoring a certain type of player and you know but by the end of it especially once you kind of read some of his interviews it looks like he was uh, of course failed by his own shortcomings in terms of how he basically got the team playing and also a little bit by the ineptitude of the board in failing to secure the players that he needed to play the football that he wanted so apart from that era I can't think of another time when United have actually looked like a team that's been coached to play a certain way uh, maybe apart from Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's first six months of the club we sort of have a, we had a bit of an identity counter-attacking team hits you fast on the break but since then we've regressed into this weird in-between team we don't necessarily keep the ball that well and we don't really counter attack with the kind of potency that we think we should be a counter attack move especially when you think about the players that we have to our disposal at our disposal sorry so the game naturally started off a bit shaky um no real surprise there in terms of how we got going if anything, I thought we probably might have started to get a bit of a grip at the game towards a 20 minute mark. But then suddenly our centre midfielders and Bruno Fernandes and Paul Pogba kept losing the ball. Bruno Fernandes, again, if he's not playing a, a ball that is inch perfect to a striker, he does look fairly wasteful in possession. Too many times he often tries to, you know, clip balls over the top first time and, you know, they spin off his foot and go out of touch. Not his fault, of course, things happen, but he does try too many high risk passes when sometimes it could be easier just to kind of control it and play into somebody and try those risky passes further up the pitch i would say in that regard uh paul Popper just still looks off he looks um for me he looks he doesn't look match fit whether or not it's actually him actually not looking fit enough to run around the pitch but just in terms of cardiovascularly he still looks like he's got an issue he suffers from covid i don't know why we're playing him now if we if we sign a van der beek i don't know why we're still relying on paul Pogba. but we should be able to rotate him and give him the time that he needs to get back up and running of course a player of paul Pogba's ilk is never going to refuse to play right he's never going to make himself unavailable but i think it's up to the manager to kind of step in and say hey you're one of our main men we need you to perform when called upon so let's put you out of the team and play band that didn't happen fair enough then of course um we start playing and i guess we give away the penalty which was you know a fairly um a fairly fair way to kind of end the first half, especially on the 40 minute mark. I think we saw a lot of pressure that we were kind of absorbing from Brighton really unsuccessfully. They had a lot of joy on their left hand side, our right hand side that was causing a lot of issues. And I think the penalty might have come from that left hand side, actually. Um, uh, Bruno Fernandes tried to chase Lamperty back into the box, who was very dangerous throughout. We did keep him fairly quiet, I think, but the moments he did have the ball and he did make it into our area, he did cause us a lot of issue. Lamperty smiled 
smartly kind of runs across Bruno, knocks him down the floor, and it's clearly a penalty. And then, you know, when um, Mope is set to, to take the penalty, I don't have any faith in De Gea saving it. I think De Gea has saved, like, what, two out of 29 penalties or something like that? He's got a worse penalty record than Paul Robinson, I read somewhere. So I didn't really expect him to save that. If anything, I was expecting Mope to miss, but he didn't. He ended up penanking, or pen yeah, he ended up doing a penanka, chipped the ball right down the middle into the goal, and then proceeded to do the laughing, crying emoji, which, you know, in the end came out to bite him in the ass. But then, you know, I don't blame him for, you know, being so celebratory and cocky, especially playing against United of this modern era. But then luckily we end up taking an uh, equalizing goal just before half time. Um, a really good free kick into the area by Bruno Fernandes, who seems to be, uh, you know, at another level when it comes to dead balls. Um, you know, whether it's free kicks into the area, corners sometimes, and penalties, of course. Really good uh, free kick into the back post. Uh, Matic did really well in terms of just getting his foot to it and, and knocking it back into the mixer and then um, through a couple of deflections finally off of Lewis Dunk it goes in 1-1 then you're thinking okay cool we might be able to wake up now we finally got a goal we didn't probably deserve we probably might you know decide okay now we need to wake up and try and get some control of the game involve some of our midfield players maybe move Pope and Bruno further up the pitch get Matt get Matisse to start dictating the play bringing the ball out from defense breaking some lines get Greenwood and Rashford involved but no that didn't happen so we carry on you know playing a little bit um, annoyingly then the second half starts and we carry on in the same direction I think we just about gave we nearly gave away a penalty again um that that rightly got ruled off but the danger sides were there right the fact that they were always sort of had a player one-on-one -on -one in our box on the on, on either side of the area kind of is a bit of a cause of cause for concern but then we get a bit of luck of a draw and we finish and we score a pretty decent goal to go two on ahead and um, Marcus Rashford um, runs onto the end of a Bruno Fernandes assist that is shocking to call that Bruno Fernandes assist doesn't make any sense literally Bruno Fernandes you know pops the ball through the lines and Rashford runs onto it on the left hand side cuts into the area and takes on literally three people he dribbles past three players and then cuts back on his left foot and bangs it into the opposite corner via deflection and you're calling that Bruno Fernandes assist that's insane that's like calling um who's um was it Iniesta do you remember that um legendary Messi goal where he picks it up from like the left hand side is it against Real Vallecano or something one of his really well-known goals and he dribbles past like I don't know eight players whoever gave him the ball there was that an assist like that's insane he get he got it from legitimately from his own half but anyway um Rashford scores again you're thinking we're going to get control of the game but no we then they get piling on pressure on top of us our players are not playing well um Toshak surprisingly again takes off Pogba really early in the game because that's the thing he's got criticism for last time around that he waits too long to make substitutions he took off Pogba in like the 60 or something minute which he can't complain about I think Paul Pogba and Bruno Fernandes had fairly poor games but I think in terms of balance in terms of who is most likely to get us a a result with some balls and maybe a chance to score a dead ball you know a free kick or whatever it would be Bruno so he kept Bruno on took off a sacrifice Pogba and uh, Fred came on who I think should have started I have um as much as I like Matic I still think his legs aren't where they should be and I think if you are going to play a defensive midfielder with um Bruno and Pogba in front you need somebody a bit more mobile to get around the pitch because I think even though I don't think Pogba, I don't think Pogba is told to sit alongside matches, but I think sometimes because they know he's a bit slow, they drop back a bit and want to help out or get the ball off him to release some pressure. But I know if you're playing with like a Fred, someone more combative in that back line, that like even if you had like an Alan playing there, we should have probably purchased. It would probably push Pogba and Bruno further up the pitch. Cause that's why I think they should be anyway. All right, Bruno shouldn't be running back into the area trying to defend a right back like Lamptey. I mean, he's got oh, he's got no right to be in that box. So anyway, um. That doesn't happen. We get piled on with pressure. Uh, Brighton end up hitting the crossbar in the post a few times in the first half. Uh, Trossard looks really dangerous. Again, we end up making these like fairly innocuous players always look like, you know, prime Robin or something. I don't know why it happens. Yeah, you know, I'd always do that. Maybe because the players step up and perform, but, you know, it's always a bit concerning. Um, and then, of course, towards the end of the game, um, Solly March, who was really dangerous on that left-hand side. And uh, I think I even said during the game, he looks, com he looks 10 times better than a Luke Shaw. And he's not even that good, right? Compared to the other left backs we've got in this league. Um, it's just funny to get go against a Brighton and both of their fullbacks are ugly be better than ours. And that should never happen, right? In May night, you should never have a team such as Brighton have, you know, especially if, if it's Arsenal, fair enough. If it's a Chelsea, a Liverpool, a Tottenham even, you're right? Sometimes, you know, you're just unlucky in terms of those kind of players, especially if they're in um, London, you know, they might have the advantage of getting these bigger, these kind of better, you know, continental players, right? 
But no way should a Brighton have a better fullback than us. But Solly March was really causing a sort of damage. And I don't know if that was just Aaron Wan-Bissaka's fault. I'm not sure if it was a fault of Greenwood for not tracking back more often. But regardless of what he was doing, he was doing it really well. He ends up getting the goal he deserves. It makes it 2-2 just at the end of stoppage time, it feels like. It was five minutes of stoppage time. And then suddenly... The game carries on for longer than it should. We end up getting a corner. And from the subsequent corner, Harry Maguire heads it back across the goal, looping head. I'm not sure if it's going in. It probably wouldn't have gone in. But then um, for some reason, Mope, like an idiot, sticks his arm out to deflect the ball. It hits his hand and it goes over. Clear penalty. But the, obviously the whistle has been blown in it. But I guess in the in the law of the game, you can do that. I guess um, if there's a clear and obvious error, they go back to the VAR. The referee sees the screen on the side, gives us a penalty. And you know what the rest is in it. Bruno Fernandes scores we win it's all good but I think in the end lessons learned from this is that we have more questions than answers as Rio Ferdinand pointed out in the BT commentary but he didn't you know say anything about Solskjaer but there needs to be some serious questions asked about Solskjaer and his coaching staff or his coaching of this team we're 18 months in so far and we have no real clear identity we have no way of playing outside of what we are known from Solskjaer's time at United the counter-attacking football if we play against a team that lets us have the ball um, we don't really know how to break the lines now that all can't be with players I don't believe that signings change everything I think there is a genuine question to be asked about how social coaches this side. Why don't we have um, different styles of variations of play that allow us to break down a team with a low block? Why aren't we able to move players around the pitch? Why don't we have like a textbook style of finishing like a Liverpool, a City have, even an Arsenal, they have a particular way of playing the ball. Like a City, for instance, is a good example where the ball ends up, always ends up somehow being in the penalty spot right area and someone can just side foot it into evil corner of the of the goal or when they finish it just out of the area that, that kind of flipping that kind of really scruffy across the goal across the floor um good doing on shot from the outside of the box that's the textbook city i can even think of goals that um, spurs have scored right balls coming in across the goal and harry kane latching onto it heading onto it son doing a couple every team has a kind of trademark goal but we don't really have one except for penalties right penalties are sort of our trademark if we get penalties going in Bruno Fernandes just doesn't miss according to all his uh, ex-players that have sort of played alongside him and just said he just doesn't miss penalties it just never happens he's sort of like Mario Balotelli level right you remember early early Balotelli at, at City where he just never missed penalties they sort of that on that kind of ilk so some serious questions need to be asked about his coaching because I don't believe I think even the most stringent Ole Gunnar Solskjaer fan can admit that unless Solskjaer gets players this side is finishing 10th not because of lack of quality, but because we don't really have um, a person that's able to carve solutions when there aren't any, right? It doesn't really able to kind of change things at the, you know, at the drop of a dime. He just sends on better players and hopes that, no, he just takes off a player that's unperforming and then hopes that the addition of a newer player will just kind of spark us into life. There's no real acknowledgement of what's going on there. I'm still not convinced about some of the um, selections in terms of who we play. I think if you're playing Maguire and you have to persist with him because he's England's captain and all that malarkey and you backed him in this whole Greece debacle, you, then you have to play Bay. You can't play Lindelof. Lindelof isn't good enough to play as centre-back alongside Maguire. Now, can Lindelof play as a back three playing for Barcelona in Spain? Probably. He'd probably be amazing there, right? And um, Especially with a team that plays a certain way. He's not going to get isolated one-on-one -on -one against big athletics defenders. He's probably going to have the benefit of being able to bring the ball out further up the pitch. He could be really good, but playing in the Premier League for United where you're constantly getting press on the ball, he's running, always kind of going back towards David De Gea. He's playing against some really burly, aggressive, just tenacious strikers strikers in the league especially the ones outside the top 10 who come to Old Trafford wanting to make a name for themselves it's just a recipe for disaster and by yes is erratic yes he might um not be the most consistent in terms of injury record but he's a far better defender I think in my opinion than Maguire or, or Lindelof anyway so he has to play sure I'm still not sold on um I think he's useless for the most part I think apart from that run that essentially uh, gave us a free kick to get the equalizer he just did nothing in the game he's a complete nothing player doesn't cross well doesn't beat his man as well as he should have and always looks a bit labored I don't know what the deal was there obviously Aaron Saka has his issues but mostly going forwards defending is a1 and then again the combinations in midfield I honestly think you can definitely play and a Bruno Fernandes and Pope, but we have to play them further up the pitch. If you're going to play a defensive midfielder, you have to play one, either Fred or Matic, but you have to decide to just have that person behind uh, Bruno Fernandes and Pope and told those guys never to come back behind the halfway line. Um, but then I'm also a believer that there is a way of playing 
um, all three, right, in Pogba, Bruno and Van der Beek in the midfield, especially if you're not going to be persist with this 4-3-2-1 formation, which I just don't think is working out too well for us at the moment. So there's loads of questions to be asked about the coaching as a part, apart from all the talk about signings. If anyone looks at this match and thinks, yeah, we're on our way, this is just a win, a win, just get going. This is really concerning. You know, we essentially look at the stats here. Um, what, Brighton had 18 shots, right, five on target, compared to our seven possession 54 46 uh passes 481 for to our 32 pass accuracy they had a one percent hide in us fouls probably in the same sort of region but looking at the flow of the game and just how on the back foot we were consistently throughout is really concerning and again we're against a brighton side right, that we should be putting away with some sort of ease at least right don't get me wrong they know they're no jokers but we're man united we should be able to put our team capable enough to get a victory without any much trouble but again questions will be asked about Oli I'm sure the Oli out hashtag is going to be running there with he's with they're within their rights too I think Oli is rattled as you can see by some of his comments prior to the match about some of the players and all that stuff going on he's obviously feeling under pressure as he rightly should do I think a, a manager I don't think any other coach in his position if he wasn't so sure would get the time that he's getting at the moment with the grace I definitely think there's some issues there I even go far saying if Oli does get sacked I don't see him getting another job in the Prem I can't imagine another team in the Premier League wanting to swap their manager for Solskjaer I can't think of it he just doesn't have what it I think takes to be a really top level coach especially when you compare to what you see Arteta is doing at Arsenal in a shortest period of time he's really stamped his authority on that squad on that team discipline wise footballing wise expectation wise he's really got them playing a certain way and you now you can see if they do add a few players to that side they're gone clear but us, we're going to eventually have to sack Oli, eventually have to start again from scratch. And that's a real issue about it. That's why I think fundamentally, if Oli does get fired, we definitely need, need to look at, or it needs to be considered at least because it never gets talked about. Edward Wood's position needs to come into question. Edward has been over, he's finally, what, he's overseen, what, four to five failed managers so far and never has his job come into position, come into question, but it has to be. He's a, He's been an absolute failure in the footballing department on that side. If he wants to continue doing deals with Verizon and Chevrolet and Hugh Blow and Rhodes, I don't know, whoever we're sponsored by, keep doing those deals. Easy peasy. I, I, I could probably do freaking business management for United. I guess it's not that difficult if you've got such a illustrious brand. But in terms of the football side of things, I think we need to keep that guy fell way, way, way uh, far away from our football side of our structure and get an actual football director in to actually have a plan in place as to how we can get back onto the top of the Premier League. Because you don't hear that often. You don't even hear our manager talk about it. You don't hear anyone in our club talk about us winning a league again or winning a Champions League. We're just existing. So I think if we get somebody in with a vision, with a grand plan of how to get us back at least, I don't know, to challenge him for a title, that would be great. Because at the moment, I don't think we can do it with this manager, with his current set of players playing the way that he wants them to play it's not going to happen and just you know I, I just don't think this is this is definitely the. I don't think this is the way that we're going to end up getting back on top I just don't see it again happy with the victory not happy with the overall performance um, and of course you know Mope at the end you know sweet poetic justice you know doing the crying face emoji and you end up crying at the end that's what football's all about but in terms of that really short um, points of real um, joy and gratitude there but I'm happy we got the victory regardless let me know what you think in the match if you watched it do you think Oli um, is oh, the Oli out campaign is going to be started already do you think it's overboard um, are you just happy with the victory who's your man in the match man in the match I'd say who's my man in the match hmm BT gave it to Trossard, but he didn't score, so you can't give man the match. That's ridiculous. Just because you try doesn't mean you should get man the match. Um, who would I say is a man the match today? Just because of the pressure and what's at stake, I would say Bruno Fernandes. He probably doesn't deserve it. I know because of his play wasn't that great, but in terms of the pressure and in terms of what that's done, in terms of overall, because imagine this goes, imagine this victory goes on for us, um, is the launcher pad for us winning 10 games in a row. And suddenly we're in tight to condition. We're playing really good football. He essentially turned around our entire season with that one penalty kick at the end. So that's the reason why I'd give it to him. Not for his performance, just because of what that might signify if we do end up going for, um, you know, if we if we do end up progressing into other parts of competition or just end up, you know, progressing and having a better winning streak. Let me give it to Bruno Fernandes. I think that's it. I can't really think of any more, so I'd actually give it to him. Maybe David De Gea at a stretch, um, but that's about it. But yeah, for May night three, Brian two. Uh, we've got m more victory out the way and hopefully now we can push on but yeah more questions and answers really more questions and answers anyway apart from that peace thanks for tuning in make sure you like subscribe click the you know on the side for any more related videos regarding myself and obviously leave a comment down below on um, your opinions of the match peace